Happy New Year! It's 2020. I'm so happy to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us here on the podcast. It's a new year, y'all. It's a new year. And we have lots of fun and funny things that we want to share in music making this year. So I hope that we're kicking things off at the right tone. My idea is to try to set a tone that's a little bit more fun this year. Not that we haven't been having fun all along, but now it's intentional fun. And so it's going to be really interesting. I think we'll do a lot more polls this year to find out, are you having fun in your music making out there? And I will be talking with my students gathering more information from them to make sure that they're still having a fun time. They usually let me know that, but now it's just more intentional fun. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy about this new year. Today's show is going to be a little different because we're setting the tone, as I said, and we're also going to do a little bit of a search online together because I want to bring to your attention what the world says about fun and music making and finding the funny in music making. And then I wanted to share a little bit with you about me and what I find to be funny. I know what really gets my attention, what makes me laugh. And I'm wondering if it's the same thing that makes you laugh. It could be. It could be not. (laughs) So let's have some fun together on today's show. You're listening to C Major before the show. Major Porter, and it is Saturday, January 4th, 2020, and it's dark outside. It's a little bit after 5 Eastern time, and so I'm waiting for the time to change. I think it'll be more fun to to have more light to deal with on a Saturday, so I'm looking forward to that, and I'm hoping that this groundhog is going to give us an early spring. Yes, waiting on the groundhog. So setting the tone here on C Major Before the Show, as well as the C Major radio show, which I hope you'll listen to a little bit later. And also, I will be talking with you about my show that's coming up. So I have an upcoming show in New York, and I'll say a little bit more about that a little bit later on. But let's get to the fun. So it was a fun week. It was an interesting week with my students because some people were still away. Some of my piano families were still out for the holidays. And so the few students that I was able to work with this week, I would have to say my most fun student was the one that wanted to work on a jazz piece. And I've called out that piece in the past. I'm not going to say the title, but if you want to know, you can always contact me off the air to learn about some of the pieces that I'm teaching But he really, really, really wanted to learn this piece. And so I would say he had the most fun out of all of my students. So applause for him. It's just a little mini shout out to that student. Very fun student. The other funny thing was that as soon as he came into the studio, he was like, "Uh, so what was your resolution for this year? So I said, okay. I'll tell you my resolution is to have more fun and and find something funny in music making for my students this year. Why? What is your resolution? He said, I don't really have one. I just wanted to hear yours. (laughs) Very humorous students. I'm very lucky to have students with a sense of humor. They really brighten my day. And so, again, we're going to be talking about what's coming up for the show a little bit later on, on January 24th. The biggest thing that I want to remind you to do is to get your tickets. So write down this code as we're leading up to that moment where I really take you online to show you where you can get the tickets. But the code C major 126 expires in two days on January 6th. So you want to get your tickets like right now, if you can online and just go to 
aftonshows.com to do that slash C Major Porter. So I'm going to be pointing to you where I'm putting these things on my socials. And if you require a direct text message, let me know that too so I can can get that code to you. And I've had some some people just say, you know, we really want to support you. So I really hope that they're able to support me in the way that they want to and and to get the tickets and, and that it's it's something that they look forward to. And I think it is because they're already asking me if they can't make it to the show, if they can watch the show live. So I'm hoping to work with a promoter on that so that we can get the show live, maybe on Facebook Live or something like that. We'll see what we can put together. Also, if you have a direct message that you want me to to work with you on, I can do that. And namely Facebook. I have Messenger, so I'm able to get to you directly that way. And if you have an email address you would like to share, just share that email address. You can sign up for our website over at musicglue.com slash Porter. And again, I'm going to say a little bit more about that later on, but let's get to the subject at hand. So we're talking about what's fun. <laughs> I'll be playing our laugh sound effect a lot throughout today's episode. And so I really have to sit back and think about this because even though I have fun with my students, I have to think, I have to really think about if what's fun to me is the same thing that's fun to them as a piano player, as a pianist. And I would have to say no a lot of the times, you know, because I think we have fun because I'm trying to get them to really lighten up and and maybe laugh along with their learning and not take it so seriously, not get uptight, not get stressed, and to be relaxed when they're playing piano and to think about how they're positioning their wrists, how they're positioning their fingers on the piano, but in a relaxed way, in a way that pedagogues would tell you to direct your students and and the way that research says to do that. But I feel like I'm a relaxed piano player, but also I feel like I love the challenge of playing technical exercises. Or when I was studying piano with my piano teacher, one of my favorite moments was to play Hannon for her and to really show her that I knew my technical exercises just exercising my muscle memory at the piano is fun. Playing running music is fun. Playing swing bass style is fun. And there was a piece that my teacher introduced to me called Dizzy Fingers. That was fun. So it's interesting, you know, that certain things may be fun to certain pianists, but maybe not so fun for certain piano students. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I'm not judging. I'm just saying. And so another thing that's fun to me is when I experience live music as a performer and also experience live music as an audience member. So some of my best and most fun shows that that I attended was, for instance, Morris Day in the Time at B.B. King's. He was saying some really funny things on stage. It was just a fun time. And if you watch their videos on YouTube and other places that they post, it feels like they're having a lot of fun. It really does. And and their sense of humor is just really present, it seems. And and so Prince at Madison Square Garden, you know, it, it just felt like he was... He was having a lot of fun on stage. I think it was part of the musicology tour that I attended. I think it might have been that. No, it was something else. It was the Welcome to America tour. That's what it was. And so I just felt like the whole stage was filled with musicians that really knew how to have fun and their music making. But at the same time, they took it seriously. So... Again, getting back to my students, most of the fun times I've had with my students was maybe goofing around with the music and the lyrics. You know, those lyrics that you run across in the method books and piano method books and during the lessons and and just hearing the parents 
say very positive comments about the fun that we seem to be having and just finding out the built-in fun in, in the music making. I think that's been some of the most fun times. Making fun of someone and their music making is not fun or funny. So let's be clear on that. But at the same time, expression is individual. So how do you express yourself? If you know how to play two chords, play those two chords really, really well and have fun playing them. And don't stress about the fact that somebody else knows 200 chords. I mean, you know, you have to find the humor in that. (laughs) So I'm going to come back to what I've written here on my list of things to say about fun, the fun, finding the fun and the funny. And I'm going to turn my music up just a little bit because what I'm going to do now is just do a search online with you to find out what the internet is saying about what's fun and funny in music making. So you run across a lot of jokes that are made by musicians, for musicians. The thing that's coming to mind now is all the jokes that are made about tuba players. But if I just search what's fun in music making, Just take that question and see the first thing that pops up. Okay, makingmusicfun.net. That's the first thing that comes up. Other topics, the day when music making loss is fun. That's interesting. Fifteen ways to create musical ideas. Sixty best music making I guess, ideas. Incredibox, something called Incredibox, which is supposed to be an interactive music experience. A music app that lets you create your own music with the help of a merry crew of beatboxers. Okay. How to balance technique and making music fun. That's interesting. Three fun music games and activities for middle school and then Free online music making for kids and adults. Creative fun. Okay, so that's just some of the first topics that came up. Now we're going to change the sentence just a little bit and say what's funny in music making and see what comes up. It'll be interesting to see if the same thing comes up. Okay, so makingmusicfun.net came up again. Funny music producer memes. That came up. 10 funny beat maker and music producer memes. One hour of funny music. That's interesting. And then some of the same ideas that are coming up. So I think you have to look a little bit further. So if we search down further on the page, we can see music joke of the day. Let's just click on that. Of course, I'm not going to read anything that I think you may not appreciate. Cheesy, laugh out loud music jokes your students will love. Okay. Looking to start music class on a light note. Your students will love this collection of favorite cheesy music jokes. So maybe we'll read one or two of those. See what happens. Okay. So. What's the most musical bone? The trombone. Okay. And then you have a picture. You're nothing but treble. All you do is bring us down. Okay. Okay. And there's a picture of a bass clef staff, it appears, or a bass clef having a staff meeting. Okay, and then here's a picture of an and sign. Oh, I'm not the musical one, you're thinking of my brother. So the and sign must be kin to the treble clef sign. Okay, how do you make a band stand? Take away their cheers. Hmm. Time to yodel. Knock, knock, who's there? Little old lady, little old lady who? Wow, I didn't know you could yodel. Okay, I've heard some of these. And then for the last time, yes, he's still following you. Okay, so then you see some notes on the staff. An eighth note followed by two eighths. How many concert masters does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, but it takes four movements. Okay. 
I've heard this one. What's the difference between a piano and a fish? You can't tune a fish. Get it? Tuna. Tune a fish. Okay, this is one I haven't heard before. What musical keys do cows sing in? Beef flat. Hmm. Okay, it's the short joke. Want to hear the joke about the staccato? Never mind, it's too short. Want to hear the one about fermata? Wait, it's too long. And this one comes from musicnotes.com. So they've already put the source there. And then how do you fix a broken tuba with a tuba? Uh, with the tuba glue. With the tube of glue. That's what they're saying. Okay, so you can check out some of these. I mean, I, I would think that some of the younger children who have never heard jokes at all may find some some humor in these. Now, this one is interesting. Music Jokes Reddit. Let me just click on that really quickly. And then I might go to another. Your favorite music jokes. Music theory. Hmm. And then there's classical music jokes. Okay, some of these you have to really read and and not read them aloud. Let me just say it like that. Okay, because some people could be offended. (laughs) All right, let me go back. But if you want to find out some music jokes, (laughs) check out Reddit. And so I'm already getting tickled just reading some of these. But most incredibly lame classical music jokes. And I have to look at that ever. again you know it was that whole thing I just said you know you don't want to uh, make fun of someone and their music making uh, because individual individual expression is individual expression but they seem to really target like certain instrumentalists or instruments Okay, and these definitely, I would say, make you chuckle. Okay, let's get out of this for a moment. Now, if I look up music comedians, that's what I want to see. So, I love how the Google search is already showing you some things that you can click on. Well, we'll just go with music comedians. Wow, there's a whole list of them. Okay, so I know what they're doing because they're saying some comedians that also play instruments. So that's interesting. And so I'm seeing some now, you know, that I've always been inspired by when I see them play their instruments. So we'll go with the one that's saying the best, the the 11 best comedian musicians, and that is from Rolling Stones. So let's just see. Now, see, I already knew some of these comedians were, were musicians, but some of them I didn't know. Interesting. Okay. So the first one that's listed is Russell Brand, Steve Martin. I'm not going to name all of these, but I knew he played banjo. It was kind of cool. And I didn't know that Margaret Cho was a musician. Okay, Jack Black, we knew him. Adam Sandler, I don't think I knew that he was. Jimmy Fallon, everybody knows he was a musician. Oh, yeah, Craig Robinson, right? I know he plays a keyboard. And so... Now, Conan O'Brien, did I know he was a musician? Hmm. 
Interesting. Oh, Maya Rudolph, of course. We knew. Because of her mother. Okay, but maybe you want to Google search some of these and just find, you know, something to kind of either make you laugh, start off the new year with, with, with laughter and some funny moments. But I really am talking about the music making itself. Like, what would you do in piano? What can you find in your piano lessons that will keep you feeling happy about your piano lessons if you happen to be unhappy with your piano lessons? I think that's what we're talking about. We already said making fun of someone in their music making is not fun or a funny expression is individual. Playing music too fast is not supposed to be played fast is fun and funny to me. And then since we talked about comedians, one of the comedians I saw, I don't think it was listed in Rolling Stone, but it was on the internet, Victor Borga. Um, I liked how he was able to find the humor especially when it came to playing the piano. He played the piano really, really well. And then Mr. Bean, the guy that plays um, Mr. Bean, I really like some of his humor. But it's different. You can see that he's really just finding the humor in the music making itself and kind of making fun of either the composition or the way an instrument is played or something like that. So, you know, it becomes I think sort of physical comedy as well but I'm also wondering if I should take you know take some classes in comedy just to see what is out there what's considered funny in terms of uh, finding the fun and the funny in music making you know it's the New York area you you can do that and so I enjoy the humor of certain musicians and bands and and just in general I find that most musicians are fun to be around and have a sense of humor but for me you know playing technical exercises playing running music if you don't know what that is ask me off off air I will tell you what that is swing bass style which you've heard me mention here on the podcast and anything that involves like a lot of movement dizzy fingers flight of the bumblebee something like that mozart my fingers are just so happy when i get to play some mozart or some beethoven or something like that okay so what we'll do for 2020 we'll look up jokes and riddles together from time to time just to remind you to put some humor into your day and I have a listener challenge this week. I want you to send in some funny stories about your own music making. Funny things happen during piano. Some unfunny things happen too, but look for the funny. And I know that fun is subjective. I find coffee culture and music as fun. I find that when you enter into a coffee shop, you don't know which music you're going to hear especially nowadays, but I just can't forget about this one experience where I walked into a coffee shop and it was with some friends. And for the first time in my life, I heard opera played next to pop music. I'd never heard that before. So it was like taking an aria song by a famous opera singer and then putting that right alongside a singer from the 90s that was well known and that was really really interesting we'll do polls that try to capture what's fun or funny and then we'll have more focus on playing music and describing in more detail how to write down music also a fun focus on music theory as well and instead of homework I said this last week, and I kept my promise. We're going to post a fun music exercise for the week. So I'll give you a hint. It'll have something to do with Beethoven. And so when we meet over at the C Major Radio Show this evening, I'll say, listen, and see if you can find the humor. I heard it right away, and I was hoping my student would hear it too. But again humor is subjective sometimes and sometimes without the experience 
you don't really see certain things as fun in music making. And then you just try to accept, not judge, the other person's sense of humor. But it's all in good, clean fun. Playing by chords and by ear is fun. Writing down my own songs is fun. So even though I have the theme of heartbreak and wonder, when I look back and think about how I was writing music at the same time I was trying to get over this issue, I have to look back and say, you know, I had fun writing that. Playing it just feels fun. I was playing a little bit of it today while I was waiting for another student to arrive to the studio, to the lesson studio. And so I would just encourage you to find what's fun and find what's funny in your own music making. How's that sound? I hope that sounds okay to you. Okay, now let's go to my socials really quickly because, again, I want to remind you to please come to my show and to let you know that I will be rehearsing next Friday, next Friday night at 9 p.m. Did you hear last night's rehearsal? Clap if you heard last night's rehearsal. So hopefully I was clear about some of the things that you can expect coming up on January 24th. But let's just go really quickly. Before I do that, let me grab a sip of water really quickly and I'll be right back. You are listening to C Major Before the Show.
Okay, and I'm back. So you're listening to the music of C major, and I have to say that at the time that I was writing this, I was not having a lot of fun, but looking back on it, it was fun to write the music, but just thinking about the situation that caused the writing of the music was not a fun time at all, but looking back on it, I did have fun writing this, and then bringing it to you and I was also thinking about my students also that and this happened this week as well where I had a student that was working on stringing together a number of songs and it was interesting did not find doing that as fun as another student who was stringing together a number of songs in other words finding out the cut the cutoff points for how to merge the songs to make it into one long song. And so improvisation, I would say, is is something that's up in the air, too. Would you find improvisation fun or would you not find it fun? So I have certain students that are really into improvising, so very interesting. Okay, now let's go to the website. So the website I'm taking you to is the website that announces my show that's coming up. So if you go to aftonshows.com slash C Major Porter, you should be able to pull up my show page. So C Major Tickets, The West End, New York, New York, January 24, 2020. If you haven't gotten your tickets, please get them now. And again, you can use the code between now and January 6th. It expires in a couple of days. Tickets reminder, C major 126. That's the code. It expires two days on January 6th. So I'm trying to get the message across to all of my socials, direct text messages, DMs, email me, all of my friends and fans who are interested in coming to this. This is going to be a great show. So bring out your friends to see C Major play and help co-promote her music. Sorry to talk in third person, but this is how it reads. Good news. C Major is now broadcasting live on the C Major radio show. Sign up today to be a guest on the show. And that's true. You can sign up to be a guest on the show if you want to be interviewed for C Major before the show or the C Major radio show. Please see me. Now, C Major before the show is more casual. It's for anyone who wants to just talk about music making in a fun, frilly sort of way, but also say how music making is really changing your life. I think some of the interviews that I've done so far really speak to that. And then what I was doing for the C Major Radio Show was really trying to reserve that for a show where you can actually have more academic discussion about music making. So talking about the writing down of music, talking about composition, talking about music theory topics, and maybe doing some playing as well. So I really hope to have that up and running this year. I'm going to be working towards that. And again, to talk with musicians who have fun in their music making, not so much those that really see making music as something that is a struggle. But anyway, if you can make it, please bring your friends. The more the merrier. Friday, January 24th, the West End, 955 West End Avenue, New York, New York. The zip code is 10025. The show starts at 9 o'clock, so it's 21, ages 21 and over only. So, Get your tickets now. And again, the code is C major 126, which expires two days from today on January 6th. And thanks so much for listening. Thank you. Now, if you care to, you can also take a look at my socials so what I've been doing there is just posting some codes as well for you to access Okay, let me go to 
my Twitter and see what happens here. I just paused it because it looks like, it looked like my tweet came out differently than what I posted. Let us see what's going on. So there it is. I was looking for that tweet. I wasn't sure where it was. Um, so Afton shows promo code save fans money on tickets. Get C Majors tickets online before they expire in two days on January 6th. And then the code is C Major 126. And then it just shows C Major tickets to West End, New York. C Major performing live at the West End on January 24, 2020. So get your tickets now. So you can go to myafton.com. Okay, so it did show up in the feed. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at my Facebook. So if you happen to be on Facebook, go to the public page, C Major Before the Show. Okay. That's nice. Okay. So if you go to the page, let me go to some before the show. Same thing, just a reminder. Use the code C Major 126. It expires in two days on January 6th. Online ticket discount is $2. That's important if you plan to buy online. And then physical cash ticket discount is $1. So if you want to buy a ticket from me, then see me specifically for that. And then I also have an offer, which reminds you as well. That if you use the code now, you can get the discount that you probably want to have. And then you can see where I was live. So C Major Before the show was live. And then I'm going to be live again next Friday. So please join me on next Friday at 9 o'clock. So that's it. I, I thought I might do some playing today. But then I thought about it. I said, you know what? I do want to play more until the new year, but I think it's important today to really talk about what's going to be taking place for the new year, how I plan to set the tone for the new year and so forth. And so I'm going to be working really, really hard to do that. Now, if I go to cmajorporter.com, that's our page, more or less our blog at WordPress, and that's where we post 
our fun music exercise. So our theme that we've adopted for the new year is C Major's Classroom, Finding the Fun and the Funny in Music Making. So we will be doing that. And so just look for those posts on our socials. Let's go to musicglue.com. Now what's important about Music Glue is that you can find connections to other places online as well that we're associated with. And what I really hope to do, what I'm excited about, is to finally get set up so I can offer you some merch in our shop. So for anyone that's looking at the page and they're going, you know, C major doesn't really have a strong syllabus. Well, I'm not really trying to write a a strong syllabus because the syllabus is, is more formal. It's something that you're supposed to write when you um, when you're affiliated with an institution or a university, and so I did this just to see what would happen. I, I did a segment, well, a semester more or less, focusing on piano for parents. It's a course that provides an introduction to playing the piano, and then you could download it for free, but you just have to put your email address in, and that was it. So. What I'm finding is that with parents, sometimes we just have to explain to them how the music making process works. And I'm just learning a lot from parents and what they expect. I have learned a lot over the years. So some parents expect you to really teach songs to their their children. And some really want you to stick to method. But I'm also trying to find that that it's a point where we really have a meeting on the minds like everybody has the same goals like the student has the goal and the parent understands that goal and then I understand what it takes to meet that goal and we all line up and we get this this idea rolling for the music making so no one's surprised at the end of the year oh I thought you were learning x number of songs before the end of the year or the student thought oh I was going to learn this that and the other so It's just nice to be clear when all the goals are online. So I really hope to speak more to that too. And also to talk more on the fun aspect of music making. Sometimes parents want you to be a little bit hard on the students. And I really try to stress that if they're not going to have fun, that it's going to be a little more challenging for me to have them enjoy what they're doing at the instrument. And I think that's important. So... Piano lessons, let me just say this, it's something that I took seriously growing up, but times have changed. You really have to think about how students are learning, and so some students right away, they will tell you, I take all of my piano lessons online over YouTube, and these are the songs I'm listening to. Can you put this iPhone up to your ear and listen to the song and teach it to me? And so... Times have changed, but I will say this as I as I talk more and more with music teachers in the greater New York area, we really try to still tap into what are the benefits of of making music and also to focus on how to respond to students. So when you are surprised with students that come to you with certain expectations for their music making, how do you respond to that? How do you respond to their way of learning, their ways of learning, things like that? Okay. No matter what, 2020 is about fun. So I hope you will have some fun with me and I look forward to seeing you next week. What are we talking about next week? You know, I'm going to think about that. I have so many ideas in my head for topics that we could talk about. We're moving away from just focusing on chords and we're moving into other topics that my students are bringing to me. I was really surprised this week. I had a student that brought to me a selection of spirituals, for instance. So that's something that's helpful to you. Then let us know. We want to hear from you. Have a wonderful Saturday evening. 
Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I hope you have a lovely week. This is C Major. See me over at the C Major radio show later on tonight, and I'll see you next week. Take care.